traders Roggy here and in this free video let's answer the question it was two o'clock Eastern when Powell saved the market or as we like to call him Ka Powell so what the market got was a dovish enough Powell where we can basically say that while we don't have a clear view of the other two rate cuts that are as I've said for some time now very likely to come Powell's not gonna just basically connect the dots for us in fact and in each and every meeting both the October and the December will probably get a, a ramp up similar to what we've had in this particular meeting. So let's head on over to the CME FedWatch tool and take a look at where we sit right now after the press conference and the rate statement and the cut. So before the cut, this was how the target rate probabilities looked for September 18. Uh, while we were 50-50 going into the meeting, I mentioned in the premium video and in the free video last night, the market is expecting a 25 basis point cut and we are going to get it. And sure enough, we did. But now let's take a look at how October and December are looking. So we've got right back to that 50-50 type of hold scenario. So what's going to happen is the market's going to switch into a mode that is sort of like going down the rabbit hole where good good news is sort of bad news for the equities markets and bad news is good news for the equities markets. And anyway, in other words, anything that will twist Jerome Powell and company's arm into being accommodative in both the October 30 and December 11 meetings is exactly what we're going to have to keep an eye on. So every time we have a major event that reflects upon, I would say commodity prices, on inflation and on growth and jobs, you take a look at these two columns in each of the remaining meetings for 2019 to see how the fluctuation is and how the market's responding. So having said that, the bigger question is, are, are, the, are, the, uh, are the resistance levels overhead all but broken? In other, in other words, are we just inevitably going to see higher highs as apparently the market believes Powell swooped in to save the day? So I don't believe it's equal across all four indices. In fact, I believe the Russell highs will continue to be the highs. In other words, fading these levels, these overbought levels in the Russell will continue to uh, bear fruit. On the YM, uh, I actually believe that we have a little bit less bullishness, a little bit less trending strength here in the YM as compared to the NASDAQ and the Russell. Now the three dots on this indicate that the three and eight period exponential moving average have crossed, uh, well the three has crossed through the eight exponential. So there's a slight bit of near term propulsion, some acceleration that we see here. But when we head on out to the S&P and the NASDAQ here, you'll notice that we have the beginning of an uptrend, just three propulsion dots, but three longer term exponential moving average crosses. The 813, which is yellow, and the 821, which is green. These are the kind of colors that I use in order to understand and, and measure whether a market is beginning to take on a little bit more of an uptrending type organization. And that uptrending type organization is already here on the NASDAQ. So you might say, can we remain relatively bearish on the Dow and the and the Russell, mostly the Russell, and I would actually say the Dow and the IYT, is that the case? I do believe so. But I might actually start to uh, look for individual names and sectors within the broader NASDAQ and S&P average for potential buys, being very, very choosy, cherry picking those relative outperformers to the upside, mostly in the NASDAQ and in more tech weighted names in the S&P. So that's where we sit. I'm not a huge bull here, but I think it, the market's going to believe that Powell's going to be here to cut and cut again to support the markets. And ultimately, this is a guy who'd like to keep his job. Um, not that he's going to lose it anytime soon, but, you know, look, there's a lot of politics here, especially as we go into an election cycle. And we no sooner get past the uh, Federal Reserve meeting and we end up with the Friday uh, U.S.-China trade negotiation. So the week ain't done yet. So again, I think that there's a lot of uh, expectation for um, buy the dippers to potentially be back. So I would not be as 
bearish the overall NASDAQ and S&P. I'd be a lot more cherry picking. We'll talk about where I'm going to start to cherry pick within these broader averages and the individual futures contracts that make sense in this environment in the premium video. And I'll see you in the next update.